I have a question for you guys. As of today, would you rather use cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin, or traditional payment systems like Venmo, PayPal, Square Cash, when sending funds, transferring money? So in this video, I want to dissect this question from 12 different aspects and kind of discuss the pros and cons of each type of payment system for them. So if you're curious about my analysis, keep on watching because all of that is coming right up. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin from BFB and this is my series Kevin Talks Crypto where I share with you my thoughts and analysis on interesting topics in the crypto world. So if you don't mind supporting me by quickly smashing that like button, subscribing if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate that. So the inspiration behind this video is because I saw a post in our beginner Facebook group in which someone asked why he should use cryptocurrencies instead of using Venmo because Venmo has a lot of benefits and is very easy to use. This is a very valid question and probably one that's shared by more people than just him. And so we can more deeply analyze all the different ways to take a look at this and share with people our findings and get your thoughts as well. So this is a table that I made after doing extensive research on this topic. I will leave the link to this table in the description below so you can download it and share it as well. So the first thing I want to cover is fees. And as we all know with crypto, the fees can be from a few cents to many dollars if there's a lot of people trying to send transactions and trying to outbid each other for faster confirmation times. On PayPal or Venmo, for example, there are zero fee transfers, but depending on like if you're sending money overseas or if it's like huge transactions or you want seller protection, there could be large fees of up to 4.4% and even more for like foreign exchange rates. And so this is really a toss up in my opinion, depending on what exact type of transfers you're trying to make. Next thing is lost and stolen funds. Crypto, as we all know, there's no protection for that whatsoever, but in terms of PayPal or Venmo, if you have a mistake or accidentally send the funds to the wrong person, they can reverse that or have chargebacks. And so the verdict of this also depends on the way you look at it. But in my opinion, the traditional methods win in this because if you like make a typo in the address you send your money to in crypto, you're screwed. But for PayPal or Venmo, you can reverse it easily. If someone hacks you, you can also get them to reverse that for you as well. Next up, worldwide access. Crypto, yes, you can send it any Anywhere. I personally done this myself, sent it to kind of freelancers in like the Philippines or like India, but in PayPal or Venmo, this is not available in many countries. So you have no options to send it to them through this service. Also, this is very interesting to know when I was in Japan or some other countries, I couldn't even access Venmo to like pay my landlord. And so crypto definitely wins in this regard. And then in terms of user experience, crypto unfortunately as of right now still requires some tech savviness any way we cut it. Now we know people are building other services, making processes easier, but that's not quite here yet. Whereas PayPal or Venmo is really simple to sign up and use. They have gorgeous UIs, very short process, and a lot of people use them. So verdict is traditional methods. Now transaction limits. Crypto has no other limit. We've seen in the news, people have sent millions and millions of dollars in one transaction with the same number of fees as it would take to send a small transaction. Meanwhile, for the traditional methods like PayPal or Venmo, they have upper limits. And also many times transaction fees are a set percentage. So if you're trying to transfer the max limit, you pay a huge fee. Winner, crypto on this one. In terms of speed, crypto you can send fast, but if you want sufficient confirmations to protect against a double spend, you have to wait in the order of minutes to hours, at least for the larger cryptocurrencies, not necessarily the newer ones like the DAG based ones. Whereas for PayPal or Venmo, these are often instant and you can use it to pay other people with your PayPal or Venmo balance immediately once you receive them. So the winner for this one, in my opinion, goes to PayPal or Venmo. Privacy. As we all know, crypto is decently private and there are privacy coins that make it super private. On the other hand, for PayPal and Venmo, these services know your information as soon as you sign up. And so there's really no way around that. You can't use them unless you give them your information. Winner for privacy, crypto. Next up, merchant acceptance. Now we're all super excited to use crypto in the real world, online, in brick and mortar shops. I was ecstatic recently when I used crypto to buy an online subscription, but alas.
last effect is that most places still don't accept crypto. It's more the exception than the norm that a shop does accept it. Whereas PayPal, for example, is widely accepted. And so there's really no comparison here. A winner has to go to PayPal. Now, this is a big one, ownership of funds. Crypto, we all know the popular saying, your key, your coin. So this is ultimate ownership. Whereas for PayPal and Venmo, we've heard stories of people getting their funds frozen. Like for Venmo, if you type in the description like a joke, something about a Middle Eastern country or something else that's shady, like for drugs or something, they can freeze your account for like weeks on end. Whereas in crypto, no one can freeze your funds like that. So winner goes to crypto in this. Next up is network capacity. As of right now for the major cryptocurrencies, it's low to medium in a relative sense, whereas PayPal is high and you can have thousands and thousands of people around the world sending it all at the same time and it would still work seamlessly. So winner in this right now goes to PayPal. Now what about initial onboarding requirements? Well if you think about it, for crypto all you really need is a smartphone with a connection and you can receive crypto and send it as well. You can like download it in apps or use an email app or even SMS. There are services that do that if you didn't know that. Meanwhile with PayPal or Venmo you need a credit card or a bank account to sign up. Many people in developing countries don't have access to those whereas they do have smartphones and so crypto wins in terms of initial onboarding and accessibility. Lastly this is something that I just added but customer support of course crypto you don't have that. PayPal and Venmo you do. If something goes wrong or if you're confused about how to use it you can talk to a real person on the other end who will try to fix it for you. So as you can see there are a wide variety of things that lean one way or the other in terms of what performs better in present day. Of course I would love to hear your thoughts if you don't agree with some of my analyses definitely leave me a comment below and I'll get to it and answer you for sure. But also I just want to say of course there are different ways to think about each of these aspects and kind of twist them so that the other way is favored but this is just my take and I just wanted to share it with you. So everyone, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And please check out some more of our content that I left you. Links up above. This is Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Peace out.